The words I read yesterday, the, the, the author was saying that God wants his children to walk around with a carefree confidence. Mm -hmm. And that just, it just struck me. I had to keep looking at it. I read it and I said, glory to God. Carefree confidence. That means that we're confident without a care. We're free of care. Mm -hmm. You're not worried about bills. Come on, son, honey. Amen. You're not worried about tomorrow. You're not worried about the job. You're not worried about what's going to happen with your children. You're not worried about the economy. You're carefree. Because mm -hmm. you're confident in God. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you know, to have a carefree confidence. And I think about how many things that I constantly fight against. I'm sure you can relate to this. How many things you constantly fight against and try to guard against worrying about, mm -hmm. fretting about, getting agitated about. Amen? Yeah. And we, that's how we live our lives. Well, I, I'm just concerned. I'm just mother. I'm just father. I'm just, amen? And we use all kinds of things to justify having care. And yet the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and so God wants us to be carefree. He wants us to be carefree. Amen. You see, and, and, and a carefree confidence really is the only kind of confidence we can have. Because as long as you and I are burdened down with the cares of this world and of this life, then we're not confident. There are a lot of Christians who are born again who aren't confident in, in their life, in God. They're concerned about tomorrow, bit, tomorrow's bills just as much as those who are outside the covenant are. Mm -hmm. They're concerned about their health and the economy just as much as other people are. Mm -hmm. And yet here we are in the church. We have God as our Father, the God who the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns a camel on a thousand hills. He's taking care of everything. He says, if I feed the birds and if I clothe the lilies of the field, how much more will I take care of you, O ye of little faith? Amen. Amen. And that's God's word saying because he understands that his people still walk around feigning to be walking in faith. Mm -hmm. Pretending. You're walking in faith as long as you can see that everything's okay. Oh, I'm in faith right now because I see that my bills are paid through the end of the month. What if you couldn't see that? Would you still be walking with the same faith? Amen. If we're going to be carefree, we have to really walk and accept the, the, the gift of grace uh, that comes from God. Amen. Instead of trying to do what's right. And we're going to understand this a little bit better about trying to do what's right. In other words, we can't try to live by some external set of rules. Because that's always going to lead to frustration for us. Because we can't do it. There are people right now who are born again who are nevertheless trying to live by external sets of rules. Well, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do this at this time in the morning. This is how much I'm supposed to read. This is how much I'm supposed to pray. This is how much I'm supposed to go visit someone. This is how much I'm supposed to... And when you live your life that way, then you're going to become uh, frustrated and full of care and worry and anxiety, and now you won't have any confidence. In, in, in the church of Galatia, there was a problem. Mm -hmm. There were some Jews who were going around teaching that in order to be saved, not only did you have to accept Jesus Christ as Savior, but you also had to follow the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. They said you had to do both. You had to accept Jesus, but you also had to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And Paul was saying, no. If you do that, you're going to frustrate the grace of God. Paul, in fact, mm -hmm. said in, in, in Galatians chapter 2, he said, he said, no man is justified through the law. Right. Nobody gets justified through following rules. But yet there was this teaching going on. And see, it was wrong teaching, and wrong teaching leads to wrong believing, and wrong believing leads to wrong living. Wow. Right? And so, we got to be careful, though, and look at ourselves and say, well, wait a minute. But if we now want to add rules, and where do rules come from? Sometimes they're self-imposed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. 
Sometimes they're imposed by your church or by your denomination. Sometimes they're imposed by the religious leaders of the day. Amen. Amen. And then we can start following behind some things in addition to me believing on Jesus. And that's going to lead to a problem. That's what Paul was dealing with. If you and I try to live by these external set of rules, we will always come to a point where we violate one of the rules. Amen. And Paul says, in fact, that, that the law actually stirs up within us a desire to break the rule. Mm. And I'm telling you, don't you know in some countries they don't have speed limits? Wow. And they don't have speed limits. This speed limit thing in the United States, everybody thinks, oh, there's a speed limit. And I know there's some countries that don't have speed limits. But for some people, the fact that there's a speed limit stirs up within them the desire to go faster. <laughs> right. And so Paul said the law really stirs up that passion and need to violate the rule, but it doesn't mean that the law is wrong. But the reason why law leads to bondage is because we're imperfect. And since we're imperfect, we cannot perfectly fulfill the law. And so when we fall short of the law, you know how we get in bondage? We get guilty. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, we, we feel condemnation. We feel shame. Right? We, we, we uh, uh, get worried and fearful because we broke the rule. Amen. Right? And so the law will ultimately lead to bondage because we will ultimately break the law and have all these negative feelings come rushing in. And so he said that the law, the one from Mount Sinai, generated the bondage. He said, that's Hagar. That's Hagar and her son Ishmael. See, you and I, as, as, as Paul says in verse 31, he said, Brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Yes. The bondwoman represents the law, which leads to bondage. But Amen. the free woman is grace, right? Verse five, chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So Paul is saying, since you have been born of a free woman, don't entangle yourself in the yoke of bondage that is of the law through these rules and regulations because now what you're trying to do is live as a child of the free woman and a child of the bond woman at the same time, and it's not going to work. What he was trying to get through to the Galatian church and what God is trying to get through to us today is that we don't have to live by an external set of rules and regulations. Amen? Amen. But we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. We are children of promise, born of the free woman. And we don't have to live according to external regulations, whether it's self-imposed or imposed by other people. Yes, yes. And the reason why that uh, we find that sometimes we're not walking around like the victorious Christians that God created us to be is because we're not fully operating in our freedom. And see, and so because of that, we, we are trying to follow rules, we're falling short of the rules, and then we get all tangled up in the yoke of bondage. Yes. Feeling inadequate, feeling inferior, feeling shameful and fearful, hoping people don't know what we really are about. Mm. And that's not the life that God wants us to have, amen? You can't be confident and looking over your shoulder at the same time, amen? Jesus fulfilled all of those external rules. Because he lived perfectly, something that none of us could do. Right. He fulfilled all those external rules. Now we're married to him. And we have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. Jesus did the will of the Father. He then communicates to the Holy Spirit the Father's will. The Holy Spirit then speaks to us. Amen? Amen. You don't have to worry about the fact that, what well, is somebody telling you you don't have to follow the rules? No, I'm not saying that because Jesus is not going to say anything to the Holy Spirit who's not going to say anything to you that's in violation of those rules. Uh -huh. But you and I don't have to try to memorize the rules and make the rule our focus so that we can be approved unto God. Wow. What we have to do is to be thankful 
and out of a heart of love and gratitude, say, Jesus, whatever you tell me to do, yes. I'll do it. Amen? Amen? But if we try to live according to rules, God said we're going to live in frustration of life. What he meant is this, is that we're always going to fall short of the rule. We're always going to violate the rule. And we're always going to walk around frustrated. There's a lot of frustrated Christians right now who are walking around because they're trying to live up to some external standards. Wow. Their grandmother told them, this is what we do. Pastor told them. They don't mind told them. Television evangelist told them, this is what you're supposed to do as a good little Christian. No, what you need to, and I need to do is just simply live a life of, 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 of loving obedience and gratitude to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And if we do that, we'll always be seeking his voice and his face. What do you want me to do today? Amen. Amen. And when he tells you what to do, you can now walk around with a carefree confidence because you got a word. You got a word. And that's all you need. You don't need a rule when you got a word. Amen? You don't need a rule when you got a word. Jesus. 